Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever your current life situation is. Hello, YouTube. This is Jeffrey Kite coming back at you with another episode of Kite's Curiosities. Had some TTMs over the past couple months. I just hadn't done a video on them. I'll get you guys caught up. Um, I've had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight returns. I'll say, yeah, eight returns, and then one return to sender, and that is Mr. Ark Almarola. Uh, he is a NASCAR driver, and he is retiring this year. They called him the Cuban Missile, and uh, he was a, a really good race car driver on the NASCAR circuit. Apparently, he's done signing, so. Um, if you've got any hopes and dreams of getting a card out to Mr. Almarola, just hold off on it till you see him signing again because apparently he is done. Big old return to send up here. Uh, that's sent back June. So I'm going to pull the card out and uh, set him aside. <laughs> Some of the others has come back. All right, so let's get started here from Charlotte, North Carolina. So let's see here. Bang it in. Let's just go ahead and tear it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mr. Justin Allgaier. Nice. That's a 2005 press pass. And then this is a, one of them prisms I got last year, I think it was. Let's see a year on that. Yep, 2021 Panini Prism last year. Very nice. He's been featured on this on this channel a couple of times with him signing. Uh, Justin Allgaier, of course, he's a Xfinity Driver, he's the Xfinity most popular driver the past three seasons, 2019, 2020, 2021. He was uh, the series rookie of the year in 2009. He uh, won the regular season championship in 2018. Didn't win the cup championship, but was the regular season points champion that year. Uh, he's had him a win this year in Darlington, so... Uh, he's already done made the playoffs, so we'll set him right there, and we'll just keep on going there. That's Mr. Justin Allgaier. There's another one out of Charlotte, North Carolina. another Justin Allgaier. I must have sent, I don't remember sending two separate requests out. Maybe this was from last year that I hadn't got, and this was this year's? I don't know. This is a old card, 2017. I remember I remember sending some out to him. I didn't know I sent two separate requests, but there he is again. Just a beautiful signature. What do y'all think, folks? Isn't that nice? Good looking signature there. Mr. Justin Allgaier. Very happy to get him back. Very generous signer. Nothing else in there. All right. This is from College Racing in North Carolina. And welcome, North Carolina. I think that's a cool name for town. Let's see, who is this going to be? If you want to ride a driver before I rip this up, let's see, Greensboro, yep. There's the address. If you want to write to the person that sent me this return, let's see. Let's see who it is. Call of Racing, P.O. Box, 1627, Welcome, North Carolina, 27374. All right, let's see. There's your free address, folks. Let's see what we got here. 
and taped on the back. the dinger AJ Almondinger nice beautiful signature on that card this is one that I got last year AJ Almondinger nice AJ he's got him two wins on the series this year um he's he has had several several regional championships Several cart open wheel championships and things. Um, call it Formula One. He's done a lot of that driving. He was the 2012 uh, 24 Hours of Daytona. He's uh, won that, and he's got two wins this year. He won out of Austin, and he won out there in Portland. So he's got his ticket punch to the Xfinity Series uh, playoffs. So he's done real well this year. So very happy to have the dinger. I'm gonna get another uh, request out to the dinger here. I didn't find another card of him. I'm gonna get to him sent this week. So let's see. Uh, we're Carroll Stream, Illinois. Let's see where this one's from. Carroll Stream, Illinois. Well, something on the back. Oh, well, there's you another free address, folks. That is none other than Jim Lavin. Uh, Jim Lavin was, um, he was an offensive lineman on Georgia Tech's 1990 National Championship team. And there's the card right there. Turned out really good. And see how it kind of skipped a little bit on him? This is why you rough those cards up. It's got a little bit of shine on it, but I took most of the sheen off. Listen. See? See how that? I took most of the sheen off with an eraser. And that's why it's important to prep your cards. Because sometimes that pen will skip. And when that pen skips, you know, it won't do so good if you ain't prepped them. It turned out pretty nice up there. I like that. Jim, what did he play? He was a guard, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he was the offensive guard on that team in 1990. Had a fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown against Wake Forest. Right there. Yeah, it said. So he scored a touchdown that season. He originally got him a scholarship. Uh, what was it? Uh, Army? Yeah, he was up at West Point and transferred to Georgia Tech and worked out good for him. Sent a little note with it. it. says, hi, Jeffrey. Thank you for the nice letter. I appreciate all the kind words. Georgia Tech is lucky to have fans such as yourself. Well, I root for Georgia and Georgia Tech, <laughs> Liberty University, and Georgia Southern. Those are my teams there. Uh, see, hopefully the Yellow Jackets can get things turned around this fall like we did back in 89. 1989, folks, that was a year they had a winning season. I want to say they were 7-4 and four that year and got snubbed for a bowl bid. And they came back in 1990 angry. Oh, they came back angry and ready to play. They was the number 10 defense in the nation that year. And they went on to win that national title. Uh, hope you're doing well, Jim Lavin, number 65. Very nice. Very happy to have this. Thank you so much, Mr. Lavin. Um, that's another one right there. I think this makes the sixth or seventh member of that 1990 national championship team that I've got autographs of. I hadn't featured them all on YouTube because I started uh, collecting that team back before I started my YouTube channel. So anyway, very nice to have Mr. Lavin. Hopefully I can get that collage completed before too long and uh, be able to put it together and showcase it on this channel. All right, it's coming out of Charlotte. Another one out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's see who we got here. I 
Make sure there ain't no mud in there. Oh, yes. Mr. Bobby Allison. Look at that. That's a beautiful, beautiful signature there on that 1991 Max NASCAR car. That's him as an owner. And he sent an extra. Him as a driver, leader of the Alabama gang. And he was. Um... Uh, those of you who don't follow NASCAR too much, the Alabama gang consisted of this group of drivers um, from the state of Alabama, and they did a lot of dirt track racing, built their uh, following up, built their name up, and uh, built their teams up, and uh, hit the NASCAR circuit, and just, man, they may have, they just dominated. They made some, some good, good runs, and um, I'm kind of teary-eyed looking at this thing. I'll tell y'all uh, about why I'm kind of emotional looking at this right now. Uh, but first, let's talk about Bobby Allison. He was the 1983 NASCAR Cup champion. And uh, he won three Daytona 500s. Won it in 78, 82, and 88. And he had um, a son named Davy Allison. And Davey Allison, he's in the he's in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. I believe Bobby is too. But but a Davey Allison, he's in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. That was his son. He was gonna go on to do some crazy things in NASCAR, but he tragically died in a plane crash. And if you if you see this, look at this card up in the very top right hand corner. You'll see a little airplane. I think that was the type of model and plane that Davey was on when he uh, crashed and died. Um, nice little tribute. Very nice little tribute card there. So Very happy to have that. So, Oh, here's another address. Another free address if you want to write to Mr. Bobby Allison. All right. Oh, and lots of good NASCAR returns. All right, here we go. This one from Medford, Oregon. Let's see. Oh, let me check. The video is already 13 minutes long. I apologize. I'm going to keep going, but I've had all kind of good TTM goodness. I can't get this one open. There we go. Oh, nice. Mr. Tom Blanchard. Tom Blanchard. He was a punter for the Saints. Um, let's see what years he played. I want to say he played a few years after that. Um... He was a really good punter, but in college, this joker was a heck of a quarterback. He um he went to Oregon, didn't he? Yeah, he went to Oregon. Played at Oregon. And um 1969, he was a quarterback for Oregon. They finished that year not a very impressive record. He was um they were five, five, and one. And um, so the record wasn't all that great, but he was the number four quarterback in the nation in that year, 1969. Fourth rated quarterback as far as passer rating goes. Fourth in the nation in um, quarterback rating. And he was in the top five in the Pac-10 in completions, attempts, completion percentage, yards and touchdowns came back to play again in 1970 but didn't get it quite as much playing time because uh, Oregon got this uh, hot young young quarterback prospect by the name of Dan Fouts <laughs> came along and uh, outshined Tom 
a little bit in practice and in the season, which, uh, you know, he's still got to play. He's still got his uh, his playing time. He was he was their punter, too. And that 1970 team, again, not a very impressive record. They 6-4-1. and one. But the teams they beat, they beat number 15 UCLA. They beat number 10 USC. And they beat a ninth-ranked Air Force squad. So, I mean, they only had six wins, but three of them were against top 15 uh, competition in the country. So, I mean, they, were, they were, weren't too shabby. He went on to have a great career. He played 11 years in the NFL. So, let's see. Is this all the – no, uh, clearly that's not all of his stats there. Played 11 years in the in – the, in the, uh, NFL and um, had a 41.3 yards per punt average. And um, 1977, uh, he got to show his arm off a little bit that he had in college while he was the fourth rated passer in the nation in 1969. It was against the Rams in 1977 that he got to throw a 33 yard touchdown pass to. This uh, player's name was uh, Elois Grooms. And uh, at the time, the game was tied 10-10. to 10. And uh, he threw that touchdown pass to put the Saints up 17-10. to 10. And it turned out to be the difference of the ball game. They went on to win that game 27-26. to 26. So, uh, Tom Blanchard, game changer. All right, listen, just two more. Bear with me, two more. Let's see, it's from Indianapolis, Indiana. This one, let's see, it's got a little bit of, got some chunky in it. Let's see, it looks like it's got another letter to it. Oh, nice. Did we get a note? Nope. A little index card of Indiana basketball. I might keep that and get some get some signatures on that. This is Mr. Armand Hill. Armand Hill for my Atlanta Hawks. He was a great player. Really good player. Um, not very flashy, but just a good, a consistent floor manager. Great defensive player. Um, scored uh, just over 3,200 points. Grabbed uh, a little over 900 rebounds and had a little over 2,100 assists in uh, the NBA for his career. He was in the top 20 in assists uh, every year from 1977 to 1980. That you know, 77, 78, 78, 79, 79, 80 seasons and all. Because you know, NBA they have those overlapping years. In college, he played for Princeton, and in 1975, he helped lead that team to the NIT uh, championship. And the next year, in 76, he was the Ivy League Player of the Year. And um, after his pro career, he went on to do some coaching. And he was a coach on the Celtics when they won that championship back in 2008. Right now, he's at... Uh, uh, University of Indiana doing some uh, coaching and um, working with the men's basketball team and that. So very happy to get Armand Hill back. Very nice. All right, last one. This is from Parts Unknown. As my man Michael Myers likes to say, let's see. This one feel kind of thick, too. Let's see what all went in. Oh, nice. Tucker Fredrickson. Tucker Fredrickson um, was a top rookie for the New York Giants in 1965. Yeah, uh, you can see his stats right there. Very nice. Very nice player. He um, had a decent pro career uh, but really what he's known for is for what he did 
for uh, Auburn back when he played. He was the 1964 uh, SEC Player of the Year for Auburn and um, uh, was a great player in 63, too. He uh, was one of the main players that guided that 63 team to help beat uh, number eight Georgia Tech and number six Alabama that season. And um, went on to be the number one draft pick in 1965 after his season in 64. Let's see, he wrote something. That's my letter to him. Folks, let me just give y'all an example. This is a type, typical letter that I write to him. I mean, yeah, they're kind of long, but I mean, I really try to put a lot of thought into it. And sometimes I get a little bit of extra back. Kind of like this. To Jeffrey Best wishes Tucker Fredrickson, number 24, New York Giants. Very nice. So, so that's it. That's my haul for past couple of weeks. I'm not, I haven't sent a lot out, but I've gotten some good quality people back. Uh, Y'all tell me what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Till next time, y'all take care. Now, have a good one. Oh, got some special things coming up for y'all this week. Some uh, real exciting videos. I hope y'all like them. Some pack breaks, some autograph signings. We'll be working on that World Series baseball and uh, getting some in-person signatures. Man, it's going to be a good week. So, again, like, comment, subscribe. Do whatever you want to do. Till next time, y'all take care. Now, have a good one. Bye.